It is universally recognized that cinema is primarily a storytelling medium. Cinema tells us stories through images and sounds. And to understand and appreciate cinema, we do not need to know anything about the language of cinema or grammar of cinema. Unlike reading a novel or a story, which requires specific knowledge of a particular language and literacy, cinema does not require any such thing. S enjoyment and appreciation of cinema appears to be free from all these bondages. So the basic question is that if cinema is a storytelling medium and if cinema is a narrative medium, can we compare cinema with language? Can we say that cinema is a language? To understand that, we must look at language and compare it with the so-called language of cinema. So far as storytelling in cinema is concerned, we can imagine a storyteller, we can imagine a medium of communication, and we can easily imagine the audience. In case of cinema, the storyteller is the director, the medium of communication is the audiovisual language of cinema and the audience is the spectator or the viewer of cinema. If the storyteller is the director, the director is the sender of the information, sender of the message. Through the medium of cinema, the communication is established. At the end, there is the viewer who is the receiver of the message. So, storyteller, narrator, director, the medium of communication, and the viewer, spectator, audience, the receiver of the information. So, this is the channel through which cinematic stories are communicated to the audience. But when we talk about communication, when we talk about cinematic communication, I think we actually get into a complex issue uh, relating to the very nature of communication itself. If cinema is communication, then cinematic communication is unlike what we generally understand as communication. Communication means a both-way communication or a two-way communication, intercommunication, where the listener listens and then responds to whatever he has listened or she has listened, and then a dialogue opens up. But in cinematic communication, it is a closed communication. It is a communication that is one-way communication. It is not language-like communication when you can get into a discourse through communication. In cinema, it is closed communication. The discourse is not possible. The only discourse that is possible is between the audience, among the audience, but not between the sender of the information or the tailor of the story or the director and the receiver, reader, audience or the viewer. Can we compare language of cinema with other languages, human languages like English, Bengali, Hindi, or any other written language, an oral language. I think to understand that, to before we compare that, we have to go back to the root of the uh, question that how images were first constructed. Nies for Nipse, the French inventor of photography, the father of photography, once called camera the pencil of nature. By saying that, he actually indicated that it is nature that writes on the film with light. So it is a form of writing. If we look at the root of the word photography, I think we find something very interesting. The word photography is originated from two Greek words. One is photos, which means light, and graphe means to draw or to write. So photography means writing with light. Similarly, the name cinematography has its origin in two words again. One is photography, which we have already explained. The other is kinetics, scientific study of movement. So from the word kinetics comes the cinematic or the cinematography, the word cinematography. 
that means it is not photography only it is one step beyond photography one step ahead photography that is moving images so cinematography is moving images where photography is still images and moving images is also writing with light on the film plane so the basic concept of writing has been associated with photography and later with cinematography since the invention of the machine called cinematograph. So looking at the history of invention of cinematography, we understand that those who were associated with the invention, they looked at the machine called cinematograph and considered it as, as a writing tool, as a recording device. So the analogy between cinema and language was an old one and it was in the history of cinema we find that analogy has been actually expanded and developed further and further by many filmmakers. So without much hesitation we can easily conclude that cinema is a storytelling medium which uses images and sound and it is a form of writing. From that, we can further conclude that cinema is a narrative medium, cinema is a language, and third, language of cinema is universal. That is probably why uh, Frank Kafra, a very significant and important filmmaker in America, in Hollywood, once commented Film is one of the three universal languages. The other two are mathematics and music. So we can start with the question, what is language? The dictionary meaning of language is this. The language is a system of communication used by a particular society or community. This is the dictionary meaning of language. And if we compare with the theoretical position so far as cinema's language is concerned, we can look at what uh, Christian Mates, who was a very seminal film theoretician of the 60s, defined cinema this way. And I quote, cinema is a system of images with associated sound aiming at describing, developing, narrating an event or a sequence of events. We notice that dictionary meaning of language is primarily considering language as a system of communication. And when Mates defines cinema, he defines cinema also as a system of images and sound. So his definition comes close to language. And he actually borrows linguistic terms, linguistic theories to explain cinema. And his, in his explanation, he uses two terms, lang and parole, in his study of film language. By lang, he means uh, the language system of a particular culture, the overall language system of a particular culture. For example, Hindi or Bengali or English. This is a language system. These are all language systems. And parole refers to some specific and particular usage of language in a, as an individual utterance or writing. For example, uh, it is through the study of parole that one can begin to understand the language or the lung that lies behind each usage. What I mean is that, for example, take any Shakespearean play which is parole. The overall English grammar and the language is the lung. So by studying Shakespeare's play, individual play or collection of plays, we can get an idea about the overall language that was there in Shakespearean era. So this is the way one can study parole to understand lung. Similarly, if we compare, in case of cinema, we can look at individual films, study the films, and then we can get an insight about the language system of cinema or the lung of cinema. To give you a, another example, say if we study 
the song sequences of 60s Bollywood or 50s Bollywood, we would be able to get a very good idea about how the language of cinema evolved at that period. Based on, on, on this idea of lang and parol, Metz has developed his theory of cine-semiotics. Semiotics, cine-semiotics. Semiotics is the study of signs in language. Cine-semiotics will then be the study of signs in cinema language or cinematic language. So we can see the Metz has extended the concept of language to cinema. The Russians, Russian formalists of 1920s, they were the first to actually study the relationship between literature and cinema. And they actually studied and they compared cinema with internal speech, which is like poetry in literature. Cinema is like poetry compared to poetry as in literature. And when we talk about language, we know that every language consists of a vocabulary and a grammar and a syntax. Uh, the smallest unit in any language is the letter of the alphabet, the letters of the alphabet, right? Say we uh, write a letter, write five letters to create a word. Say, for example, we write C-H-A-I-R to mean chair, which has a specific meaning. But if you look at the specific letters, the five letters in the word chair, the C appears to be an abstract sign. It has no specific meaning. Similarly, H or A or I or R, these are abstract design or sign with no specific meaning. Though all these letters have associated phonetics or sound, they have no specific meanings. They are abstract. But the abstract letters are combined in a specific manner to create meaning. And then when the meaning is created, we understand. The abstract letters make sense only when they are specifically organized. And they are organized by the syntax and the, by the grammar that governs the language. And that is where the secret lies, how an utterance is constructed. Compare this with cinema. The smallest unit in cinema will be a frame in a shot. A shot is a series of frames. Now you isolate one shot and study it. What is a shot? It is a photographic frame. Uh, and the following frames are all related to the same frame. Cinematic frames can never be abstract. That is one of the first and primary difference between uh, the smallest unit in the language of cinema, which is the frame, and if you compare it with the smallest unit in language, which is a letter. So we can say the words are made of abstract signs, which are letters, but once they are combined to create words, to put it again, when we combine the letters to create words, meaningful words, we are able to communicate. But using language, when we create words or terms, uh, these words are always general or abstract. Uh, for example, we say peace. We can say sorrow. We can say man. These are abstract concepts. Right? Now imagine you are making a film and you are given this theme, sorrow or peace or man. How do we really approach and communicate this through cinema? We can photograph a man, but then that man will be a particular person. The abstract concept of man or mankind cannot be represented through one single image of man. Similarly, to communicate sorrow, which is a very abstract concept, you have to tell a whole story probably to tell or communicate 
the idea called sorrow or peace or take any other example. It happens so because frame and shots, they are all photographs. And photographs are not abstract. And the photographs contain many other elements. The graphical elements, for example, the way the frame is composed, the light in the frame, the color in the frame, the depth in the frame, they all carry meaning in a much more complex way than a word is constructed. The word communicates in a different way altogether and images communicate differently. So we can conclude that number one, a frame cannot be compared with the letters of the alphabet. Number two, a shot is more complex than a word because of its photographic significance or photographic specificities. And thirdly and most importantly, I think we can say that cinema has no fixed vocabulary like language. Language has, you have a dictionary, you have a fixed, more or less, fixed number of words. And by combining these words, we can talk, we can write, we can communicate. But cinema has no fixed uh, vocabulary as such. The vocabulary of cinema is immense. And another important point is that there is no rigid grammar that controls cinematic communication, cinematic expression, or cinematic narration. Cinema has an immense and virtually unlimited vocabulary without having a dictionary of words or a controlling grammar. So this actually enables the filmmaker to experiment with the language of cinema in his or her own way. Cinema uses its own signifying system, meaning cinema uses images and sounds to create newer meaning within the context of the story. To give you an example, if we take uh, this example from Battleship Potemkin by Sergei Eisenstein, which was a silent film, there is this sequence in which uh, the specs were used to examine the rotten meat. And doctor looks at the rotten meat and declares it edible. And that causes the anger at the first level. Doctor wearing this uh, specs representing a particular class, representing the class interest of a particular society. And then by throwing overboard and the hanging of the uh, specs on the rope indicates the state of the or the status of this class in the rebel situation. That makes the scene or the shot of the specs hanging up from the rope becomes more meaningful. 
So it becomes part of the signifying system that controls meaning within the story context. So we can conclude that cinema is not a language but a language system because it incorporates so many things. Uh, secondly, we can conclude that cinema uses its own system of telling or narration. And we can thirdly, we can call cinema as a formal system because it is the form which uses images and sounds to make the story meaningful and help the audience to reach to interpretation. The formalist approach to cinema, which was proposed by Bordwell, become very significant in our case. Uh, and as we look at the complexity of the cinematic narration, we realize that by analyzing different stylistic approach to cinema, we can actually understand the richness of the language of cinema. Though we cannot compare it fully with language, human language, we can nevertheless say that cinematic language has its own formal system or formal style. To give you an example about the complexity, the way cinema uses language or uses audiovisual language, uses images and associated sounds to communicate the story, communicate meaning, to, and also create pleasure. Uh, I would like to give you an example from Opur Shankar by Shatojit Ray. In which young Opu, newly married, brings his wife to his Calcutta residence. He is poor, he lives in a one room you know, rented yeah. flat and he brings Aparna there. As we look at the scene, we see the complexity and we see how at different level the film operates. We can look at the sound element, the whistle of the train, the sound of the horse driven carriage, the running water from the tap, the swing machine, the footsteps, the crying of the baby, Apurna's own, you know, sobbing at one level. The images are also constructed photographically which evokes the sense of claustrophobia. If we look at that uh, and compare it with the condition of Apurna in the vast open village, we can understand why this claustrophobic uh, atmosphere has been created in this particular sequence. Aman Ghar. 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 Ghar.
Mesosen operates also in a more complex manner in which we, uh, the director creates a very, very important emotional moment in which we see Oporna breaking down, looking through the torn curtain, looking at down at the small kid playing and then she gathers courage and when uh, Opu comes back and asks whether she is happy or not, she says yes. And the whole moment is created through very clever stylistic designing of the scene. And the mesocene brings all the element to work perfectly. So it is an ideal sequence to understand why and how cinematic language system works in cinema. Tomar khub kharap lagchi na? Shotti bolcho. Chalo. Niche chalo.